Welcome to the, um, guide? Exile? As you can tell, this guide has begun a bit differently than a usual build guide. That is because I have created such a monstrosity that does not work so good. This is the first installment in a new series where I look upon lackluster builds that I have created and that have had issues or crashed and burned so badly that it resulted in their failure to appear in a proper build guide. I hope to not have these so often on the channel, but these retrospectives could lead to some good discussion or further improvements on the presented build. So I'll not be going over the build in depth and I will not recommend the build, however I will review the process that I took to make it, to develop it, and the finalizations of it. In this case we have a flailing cast on crit dark backed assassin. Yep, cock and DP. The jokes would have been oh so glorious. But let's take a step back and consider what I had originally planned with this build. Originally I had planned to use Spectral Throw and Magma Orb. So uh, cock and balls. God damn it, would have been so glorious. You would figure that these two would go together pretty well, since you stand back with Spectral Throw to hit as many times as possible at the end of the arc, and then for Magma Orb to chain out as far as possible, as well as scaling projectile counts all around. But boy, would you be wrong. The reason this variant failed is that I forgot to consider that trigger gems such as cast on critical strike will auto target enemies that it triggers on. This is bad for magma orb for a couple of reasons. One, it needs to have a tight bounce pattern so that it will hit a target more than once. And two, it needs to chain as many times as possible before reaching the target so that the scaling with a gloom fang will give it the most damage. So what ended up happening is that you would stand back from a boss or single target, hit them with the end of the spectral throw, and only the first chain or bounce from the magma orb would hit them. As you can see, this had very lackluster damage and did not scale how I and others had hoped. Thus, panic ensued as to what to change the build to since we were right around the end of the story at that point. I did not want to directly copy any other builds and there had been so much done already with cold skills via Kostri's Malice, lightning skills were basically made from Molnir, and there weren't too many desirable fire skills, aside from maybe doing something with Flame Surge. Ultimately, all of these types of cast on crit builds could have been done, but it would have just been as generic as every other cast on crit assassin, scaling elemental damage and penetration. So then someone from my Twitch chat said, uh, what about Dark Pact? And that, my friends, that sparked a terrible chain of decisions on my end. From there I tried out some Dark Pact in conjunction with Cyclone as the trigger in the end of leveling and found it to be pretty powerful and wasn't absolutely killing me. Yet. So fast forward one day and I now have all my gear set up to run Dark Pact and looking to have pretty respectable sheet numbers via Path of Building. After I got everything set up I went to try the build and had varying results. Sometimes it worked absolutely flawlessly, popping packs in one go and staying completely topped off on health via Leech, and other times I would dump my entire life in one Cyclone Sweep or lose just enough that I couldn't recover fast enough and would stay so low that I would get slapped into oblivion by a measly skeleton. <laughs> But speaking of skeletons, I could actually use those to assist me, especially on single target. Dark Pack can be cast on skeletons such that you will no longer damage yourself while casting, and it will instead damage the skeleton and chain amongst them. This paired very nicely with the Gloom Fang that I had already originally planned to use with the build using Magma Orb, as now I can benefit from the extra chain on the skeletons. However, this would come with some downsides as well. Now I was not only damaging myself when regularly cycloning through maps from Dark Pact, but I was also removing flat life for each enemy I hit both with attacks and spells. This meant that a Gloom Fang during mapping scenarios, whilst not casting, on skeletons was extremely deadly. So for this scenario I had to resign to only using Gloom Fang on bosses, or putting summon skeletons in my main cast on crit links. Having the skeletons on my main cast on crit links works fairly well, albeit sort of clunky, and not the best damage for bosses, since you really want to scale the skeleton's life pool as far as you can for dark pack to deal more damage. So my solution for this was to simply swap my necklace to the gloom fang for serious bosses and summon skeletons mainly from a helmet that boosted their life pool as much as possible. This meant for getting real damage with dark pact, we would now want to scale minion life to capitalize on the chain casting from our skeletons. After some testing on bosses with this setup, it was very potent and gave me some excellent damage results. Unfortunately, I still felt very vulnerable and would fall over at the weakest breeze at my ankles. So this is about where I stopped with the build and moved on to making the Shattering Steel Deadeye as I had much more stock in that build to succeed. In the end, the Cock DP Assassin got to around level 83 and is functional to some extent. My main issues was really figuring out how to shore up defensive layers, mechanical issues with Dark Pact, and even if it's really feasible to do both at the same time, especially on an Assassin. Overall, I just couldn't justify finishing this build and making a proper guide around it since it was so flaky in its performance. However, it was a good learning experience, and if not, a crazy two-day roller coaster creating this cock, ball, and DP monstrosity. Now if anybody has any suggestions on how to fix this, or if I get some time to come back around to it, I may be able to make this into a proper build. 
but as of right now, I'm working on a much more promising Earthquake Slayer. Yeah, that's right, you heard it, an Earthquake Slayer that uses the Disintegrator Staff, and whom I must say is turning out very, very strong. I'm taking a bit longer with this build, as I really want to min max it a bit more than my usual 3-5 to five day build cycle, and can really experience some of the endgame content that has been folded back into the game with this patch. Plus, I love me some good old-fashioned Earthquake action. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.